Here we go. Uh, probably go from this way. Nice. Hopefully I should feel better now. Good morning, y'all. It's uh, been an interesting morning. Hope everybody enjoyed that little that little blister popping video, if you could see it all right. I know my angles aren't the best and trying to hold my phone in one hand and pop with the other just doesn't work that well. But, you know, before I get any comments where it's like somebody's, you know, jumps in the, down there is like, well, Schrodinger, um, you see, you shouldn't just pop blisters. You should run a thread through them and then soak it in Neosporin and make sure you disinfect everything and then stay off your feet for a week. I know. In a perfect world, other than staying off my feet for a week, that's what I do. You know, run a thread, take care of it that way. But out here, I don't have a needle and thread on me. And... Uh, <clears throat> All I had was that bobby pin and the first aid box that the trail angels had left. So I did what worked and uh, what's gonna keep me moving. I got two more days in the town, so I'll be able to get a shower and clean it up real good then. But uh, not too worried about infection on a blister and especially in two days. So before anybody gets, you know, all worked up about my blister popping techniques I know uh, but last night was super cold again it was uh, got down to the 20s it wasn't quite as cold as the night before so I still you know slept all right and also someone reminded me of a trick that you can use with your Nalgene that I had forgotten about where you boil some water and pour it in your Nalgene and then use your Nalgene as like a heat source, like a hot rock. Um, and that worked so well, so well. Kept my, I actually was able to keep my feet a little bit warm. I could like cuddle it. My core would stay warm and it stayed warm for quite a while. So just another reason to actually carry a Nalgene instead of just two smart water bottles because yeah, you carry a little bit more weight. So much more useful. So. I got another like 20 mile day planned. You know. Uh, it might just end up going like this one. Or the one yesterday where I didn't quite make it. Because there was trail magic. But it doesn't look like there's going to be trail magic anywhere. Oh, sorry. It's hard to hold my phone up. But I'm going to try and make it about 20. Yeah, so that way I can have an easy day into town tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah, should be, should be a nice, relaxing two days. I'm sure it'll be cold again tonight, but once I get into town and get my other stuff, my warmer stuff back and actually grab some base layers and stuff, should be good to go. So, till later. So I'm about like, I think three days away from... Saguaro National Park 
and I'm seeing significantly more cacti. See, huge prickly pear right there. I think that's what I think that's what it is. Pretty sure. Uh, I don't see any around me right now. I think that's a cactus. It seems like it's real thorny sticks and doesn't look like a plant. But I've seen a lot of barrel cactuses earlier. And uh, yeah, I can definitely tell I'm like really in the desert. A lot of, a lot farther between water right now. So yeah, like I think seven or eight more miles or something until the next water. And that was from the beginning of the day where I've gone seven or eight miles. It was a 15 and a half mile walk to water. So enjoy the cactuses and wish me luck. Good morning, y'all. Another beautiful day here on the Arizona Trail. I didn't make like a video last night. I'm like right in the sun. I didn't make a video last night because I got caught up talking to this guy. One of the most interesting people I've ever met who's led the most interesting life, I think. Like if this dude wrote a book, I would absolutely read it. Uh, his name, his trail name is Ganja Grandpa. He's an older guy. He smokes a lot of weed, has been all his life. Say what you want about it, but you know, hey, I mean, the man has led an interesting life. So I, so I got talking to him, I completely forgot. So apologize for that. But you know, this kind of happens on trail. You just meet, meet some people that like, yeah, it's, you're just amazed at like all the things that they've done. And, and I mean, yeah, this guy has done, been everywhere, done everything it seems like, and just got, got talking to him about his stories and yeah, I forgot the video. Uh, on top of it being an uh, amazing, beautiful morning, uh, you probably can't even see it, but I made a little 100. This is mile 100 of the Arizona Trail. I made it myself. I don't know if like people don't do it, don't like make the little sick things on the trail, but I just made a small one for myself. I uh, thought it was good enough. Um, so mile 100, it's over one eighth of the way done. Um, and yeah, it took me, well, I guess eight days. I'll count it as eight days uh, because, you know, today's day number nine, I believe. Um, but it's like, I camped at 99.9 .9 last night. So we're, uh, we're going to call it eight days. So pretty, pretty stoked about that. Especially cause like, uh, the beginning is pretty, pretty rough terrain. You know, you got uh, a couple mountains to go over and it's pretty, pretty tough. And I don't have my trail legs. So the fact that I made a hundred miles in a week is pretty amazing to me. Um, got about 11 miles to do today uh, i'm just gonna get to the end of passage seven here um yeah i didn't i know like before i had there would be like little signs and i talk about like oh it's the end of passage two and three and whatever but four five and six none of them had any signs or anything i really didn't even know that I got through the pass, just kind of assumed I did, uh, but I didn't know exactly where until I looked it far out and saw like, um, oh, in passage seven already. So, uh, finishing up passage seven today. And, uh, I think I'm gonna take a zero, you know, like I've talked about with the Arizona trail, this is like my warm up trail and I'm taking my time. I got that blister, which didn't bother me too much, but I'd rather, you know, give it a day to heal and uh take a day off i feel like you know after coming off of that first zero which i don't know if i talked about but like talked about beforehand that i might but in patagonia i took a zero and it just felt like my legs came back just 10 times stronger and yeah so i'm gonna go ahead probably take another zero tomorrow and then get into from what i've heard is one of the hardest parts of the trail which is, uh, what is it? Saguaro National Park, what's the mountain? Uh, Mount Micah, or Micah Mountain. And then after that is Mount Lemon. And you do those back to back on one resupply. So that'll be pretty tough after that. And get good and rested up. And then uh, hit those after the zero. So I'll uh, see y'all later. Seems to be the same like desert 
cactusy landscape as before. So once I uh, once I hit the trail that trailhead in 11 miles, then uh, I'll uh, be taking a bit of a break. So I'll see y'all later. You know, one thing that's been amazing me about the desert is like the sheer duality of how of like the climate. I don't know the climate, the weather between day and night. I don't know if you can see, may not be able to underneath my hat, uh, but I'm pretty burnt now. I tried not to, tried to apply sunscreen, but I think getting into camp, I was kind of facing the sun. It was going down, so I didn't even think about it. It was cold. And I think I sunburned my face, getting burns on my hands. I've had burns on the back of my calf. You know, nothing terrible, just a re reminder that I needed more sunscreen. And it's like, it's not super hot, but it's like 70 degrees, completely exposed, not much wind. And, uh, you know, feel myself getting dehydrated quite often. And uh, then I go into the nighttime and it's like, like in the teens, maybe some nights. Last night was probably the warmest night of the past three or four and uh it was like it got down to like 25 so it's just it kind of amazes me you know i always heard about the desert like that but never been out here so it amazes me that you can have two completely opposite things where I'm getting sunburnt and you know getting so dehydrated that I barely like barely talk and then I go in a night and I'm so frozen that I just spend the whole night shivering. And yeah, just kind of crazy to think about that. So that's my, my little thought for the moment. So later.